So now we've discussed the poison value uh, and its associated operational semantics and also the motivation for the use of poison value. Today I'm going to introduce another terminology that is used for this kind of uh, undefined behavior, uh, weak form of undefined behavior such as poison values and that is called deferred undefined behavior versus immediate undefined behavior. So the undefined behavior that we had studied originally which is the undefined behavior, the kind of undefined behavior that is present in the C programming language, for example, we're going to call that the immediate un UB, an immediate undefined behavior or immediate UB. And we're going to introduce a new term called deferred UB. And I'm going to, uh, in this module, say what does deferred UB mean and why it's called so. So let's take this example, int x equals int max plus one. Now, this is an example where int max plus one will cause signed integer overflow and because it will cause signed integer overflow in the C programming language, it will trigger undefined behavior and I'm going to call that immediate UV. So it's immediately going to trigger the undefined behavior, which means from here on the program is allowed to do anything because it's, uh, it has done something illegal. The machine doesn't know what to do here and the machine can behave any which way it likes. And that's basically a feature that uh, for error conditions used for optimization. We have discussed this in a lot of detail earlier. And then we looked at an IR like LLVM, which uses a poison value to uh, represent the result of such computation and just transfers the uh, poison value to the uh, destination variable X. Now I should also point out that if I take another example, let's say I do two divided by zero, X, you know, let's say Y equals two divided by zero, then in this case, it will be immediate UB in both cases. So, right, even for LLVM, this would uh, result in immediate UB. So, we have selectively, uh, you know, chosen some operations where we're going to trigger immediate UB and some operations where we're going to generate a poison value. Further, we define the operational semantics of the poison value. For example, one of the important characteristics is the poison value propagates. So for example, if X is a poison value, then I can add it to anything or do any other operation on it and I can end up with a poison value again. So, you know, once again, I get a poison value. In the case of C, this statement may or may not execute at all because I mean, C has already triggered UB, but in the case of LLVM, we have just created a poison value. We are still obliged, the abstract machine is still obliged to execute the next instruction. So in the case of C, I just use a dash operator. It's not really applicable. You can do, the C abstract machine can do anything it likes, but the LLVM abstract machine will generate a poison value for this particular program into Y. And then let's say I do some kind of dangerous operation on Y. For example, I could divide by Y or I could branch on Y. And in which case, even LLVM now triggers immediate UB. So the idea is that, you know, you generate a poison value, but as long as the poison value is not being used in some critical operations or what I'm going to call dangerous operations like branch or the denominator of a division, then it just kind of keeps propagating the poison value uh, and the program keeps executing. But as long as soon as it's used in some kind of dangerous uh, operation like a memory used as a memory address or as a branch uh, condition, then uh, I'm going to trigger immediate UB. And so uh, what has really happened is that the poison value has allowed the deferring of the UB. The UB that was supposed to be triggered originally in the C program at the first statement itself has been deferred all the way to the use of the poison value in some dangerous operation. And so poison value allows deferring of UB. And if the poison value is never used in a dangerous operation, we have been able to avoid the UB altogether. Right? And that is where the power of the poison value comes from or the advantage of the poison value comes from. If the poison value is not used in a dangerous operation, then, you know, we'd never trigger UB. And this allows, you know, many common transformations, especially the ones that involve hoisting and loop invariant code motion is a very prototypical example of a, a transformation that uses hoisting. And because of this behavior of poison values, which basically defers immediate UB, as shown in this example, poison values are, I'm also going to say that poison values are a form of deferred UB. So I'm introducing a new uh, terminology, immediate UB versus deferred UB. Poison values basically implement a form of deferred UB, which is also a weaker form of UB than immediate UB. And, uh, and so this terminology helps us, uh, you know, understand the, the motivation and the operations of, uh, of 
you know these weaker forms of UB like poison uh, UB values because they um, by using the word deferred you're basically explicitly saying what's really happening in this particular case.